Namaste, yogis. Welcome to this short tutorial, little tip. Um, and today I thought we would look at the bridge pose, also known as Setu Bandhasana. And it's a really important pose for us to get that opening of the chest. But if it's not done well and it's not supported well, it can really be hard on the neck, especially over time. So let's take a look here and look at how we might prop the shoulders so that the neck can retain at least some of its curve. So here we have from shoulder stand a fold long ways. You see the knee edge of the fold is towards the back, towards the head side of your mat. Go ahead and lie back down and scoot back until your shoulders are about an inch from the edge of the mat. And that's kind of more or less, right? You'll have to play with it until you find the right place. And you can see already how she's got this nice sloping curve to her neck. And then she's going to push into her feet. Her feet are lined up with the sit bones, and she's going to rise up. Good. And then for this, I want you to take the hands to the side and come up on those fingertips. And one at a time, lift the shoulders and then come down. And then the other one. So that you're trying to get on this joint. This is the acromioclavicular joint. And that's the top of the shoulder, how those blankets feel. Okay. And then once you have that, you can choose to leave your hands here. You can put your arms wide. Or many of us like to interlace the hands. What would you like to do? Great. And then she can push down through those arms. Right? So see how she's high up on the shoulders. The sternum is being drawn forward. But you can see that there's a subtle but natural curve to the neck. It's not flattened. Her chin is not being pushed into the chest. Now, if she wanted to stay a long time, what we would do is we would have our two blocks handy. And you're going to place those blocks underneath the sacrum, the big flat bone at the back of the pelvis. And you can put two on its side, and that's a nice easy way. But if you're as flexible as Lucy is, then you'll take one of them and turn it on its side. But it should be close to your tailbone. Do I need to move it back a little bit, probably? Yeah. There. So you can see that her tailbone is just on the back edge of those blocks, and they're stacked high enough. So this is the supported bridge. You can see her outer upper arms are rolling down. You could hold the edges of the mat is actually a nice grounding way to do it. And this looks really pretty. You could stay here a long time, couldn't you? Okay, so I'm going to leave you there. But now let's look at Tiffany and do another variation. And this was a little bit more to get that chest opening. So nice thing to do before shoulder stand or before a big back bend practice. So you see now we have the blankets open in the shoulder stand fold. Same thing though, shoulders come back, close to the edge, head, neck, and hair. <laughs> Out of the way. Good, and you're gonna place your feet on the blocks. And this is lovely, it makes you feel like you're really, really open. And you're making sure that the blocks are even in line with the sit bones. That's it, feet nice and parallel. And then same thing, we might try the robot arms just to see that. Push down through the upper arms, lift up on those shoulders, beautiful. And let's do the same thing, put the arms wide. And if you've never tried this before, keep playing with it, it really does help. And you see she's tucked those shoulders in, so she's on the very top of that shoulder head, right? On both sides, that's nice. And then you just wanna notice, is my throat soft? Is my face soft? Beautiful. And then from here, start to push into your feet and drive your shins back to lift and open the chest. Good. And this is a pose very nice if you can bring your arms back down and interlace the hands behind you. Alternately, you can stay in the robot position. You want to show the robot? Good. Or you can grab the edges of the mat. Beautiful. And so again, you can see that there's space behind the neck. Let's move the chin even slightly further away. Good. And she's working her legs. The shins push towards the head. The hamstrings contract to lift and open the chest. Now, if you want to stay here longer, you're all set up. So let's come back to Lucy. And if those blocks are placed really well, just behind the tailbone, so supporting your sacrum, then one at the time you can take your legs to the sky. And this is a very nice alternative to the shoulder stand practice. You can see it is a mild inversion. The hips are above the heart. The heart is above the skull. So it is an inversion. But it's a really kind of accessible and easy version. And it's one you can stay at good five, ten minutes. It's actually a variation of Viparita Karani. I highly recommend these poses. And 
I really do recommend that you use the blankets to support the neck so it's not moving into overflexion. If that happens, the ligaments can get overstretched between the cervical vertebra, the neck vertebra. And when that happens, you're prone for all kinds of issues, in particular things like arthritis and herniated discs. But if you prop yourself well, this pose is deeply restorative in so many ways. I think you'll love it. Namaste. Namaste.